go. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't have my regular computer. It is still down. That's why there is no live show this week. So greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Um, like I said, uh, the regular computer is down, so we're going to go with the loner computer. I didn't trust it to uh, run as many live broadcasts as usually happens. So it's just this video for everyone. Um, all right, guys. Yahoo News. Just get right into it here. Revealed how a secret Dutch mole aided U.S. Israeli Stuxnet cyber attack on Iran. Now, there are a couple of things which you think would be common sense. For instance, you would assume at a nuclear power plant, if someone had oh, some kind of warning system when something is inserted into the program itself, right? Whenever it's updated, you assume that a number of people would be alerted. Anytime anyone puts a jump drive into the system, which I've been told has to happen in order to update them, anytime that happens, you think there'd be some kind of a warning? No, no, not at all. And again, I'm not in favor of Iran having a nuclear power plant. I'm not in favor of anyone having a nuclear power plant. However, Iran is a particular problem, not just because they are the most hateful leadership arguably in the world today, but also because they're trying to build this nuclear power plant on a known fault line. Now, stay with me here. The very people who warned about Fukushima and the certainty of it happening, and I might add who were not listened to, they are the very same people warning <clears throat> that within the projected lifespan of this power plant, and let's remember, power plants that were meant to last 25 or 30 years are now running you know, 50. So with, with very little... Uh, debate it is it is a very good chance that there's going to be a fukushima sized earthquake in this area so even if iran had suddenly seen the light and become great and wonderful people particularly the leadership i mean although many of the citizens we also chance death to america um this would be a disaster and clearly my issue here is that now that I ran by, via reverse engineering has Stuxnet, who knows what kinds of things they're going to do, maybe tweak the code a little bit. Now, I'm sure that would be picked up, but you get what I'm saying here. They now have a rough blueprint of how to build a computer virus, which could cause a very very code red moment at most nuclear facilities. Now, we're going to want to read the whole article, but buried in this Yahoo article is exactly what, hap what it was designed to do. It says, quote, the code was designed to close exit valves on random numbers of centrifuges so that gas would go into them but couldn't get out. This was intended to raise the pressure inside the centrifuges and cause damage over time and also waste gas, which is fine. But while that's, well, I would say it's important to prevent a hateful regime from like Iran from getting a nuclear power plant. I also think this could be its own catastrophic idea, not just to the innocents there, but to our allies, should this really go red? And uh, again, to anybody else who may be the victim of a virus, which I can imagine that Iran would be working on now quite vigorously. Germany helped with this. The Dutch, Israel's Mossad, says this version of Stuxnet, and it, it has been updated twice, in 06 and, uh, May of 06 and February of 07, I believe. So I mean, popping jump drives in, no warnings going off. No, why should you have any kind of backup system like that programmed? This version of this, you know, it's just a nuclear power plant. 
Why have any safeguards? This version of Stuxnet had just one way to spread via a USB flash drive. So it's the only way they could have even done it. The Siemens control system at Nance were air-gapped, meaning they weren't connected to the internet. Well, that's good. So the attackers had to find a way to jump the gap, that gap to infect them. Engineers at Natanz programmed the control systems with code loaded onto USB flash drives. So the mole either directly installed the code himself by inserting a, U inserting a USB code into the control systems, or he infected the system of an engineer who then unwittingly delivered uh, the Stuxnet when he programmed it. So we're trusting, now let's pretend we're Iran and we have our tiles on our head. We are now trusting and just about anybody to put information on a flash drive, which we're going to use in a nuclear power plant. That's brilliant. Once that was accomplished, the mole didn't return to Natanz again, but the malware work it sabotaged throughout 2008. Now, some people think that this may have led to some of the problems at Fukushima, but we don't know that for sure. In 2009, the attackers decided to change tactics and launched a new version of the code in June that year and again in March and April of 2010. This version, instead of closing valves on the centrifuges, varied the speed at which these centrifuges spun, alternatively speeding them up to a level beyond which they were designed to spin and slowing them down. The aim was to both damage the centrifuges and undermine the efficiency of the enrichment process. Notably, the attackers had also updated and compiled this version of code back in September of 2007, when they had compiled the code for the first version, suggesting that intelligence, uh, that Dutch Mole had, should say suggesting to intelligence, nice typing there, the Dutch Mole had provided in 2007 may have contributed to this version as well. Uh, said once the later code, the code was unleashed, however, the attackers had lost the inside access to the tans and they had that they had that they had once enjoyed through the mole, or perhaps they simply no longer needed it. They got this version of Stuxnet into the tans by infecting general targets who brought it into the plant. The targets were employees of five Iranian companies, all of them contractors in the business. In other words, this is where the greed of the world gets to us. And uh, you can read the whole thing on Yahoo, but let me put this in a nutshell. And George Bush said this once. Many of, uh, one of the few wise things he said, I'm paraphrasing here, um, many of the most hateful regimes in the world will destroy or steal that which they could never make. Iran has more people working on this than a group jigsaw puzzle on lunch break. They can't do it themselves. They can't. They don't have the technology. Um, they're very religious in some instances, at least the way they practice it, to be fair. Not all of Islam, I'm sure. The way many of them practice it, it prohibits their women from even learning in some instances. So there you have r roughly half the female population. Maybe some of them can learn. So what, quarter, an eighth of the population even? They can't even learn. If other companies weren't investing in trying to make money off of Iran getting a nuclear power plant, which they should never have, it's like giving a baby a grenade, we wouldn't be in this situation. This is happening due to sheer greed. It's one of the reasons I like, in this regard, like, but I'm not crazy about Trump. Trump does want to make things America first. However, and he was wise to get us out of that Iran deal because you know what Iran's going to do with, you know, just the material alone to make a dirty bomb. They don't need to make a nuclear bomb from this. People forget that. A, nu uh, a dirty bomb could shut down vast sections of New York City. But 
he also deals with people like Saudi Arabia, who I'm equally concerned about. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of split on his stance there. I am happy that he doesn't want to continue to see progress out of uh, one of the most hateful regimes in the world getting a nuclear power plant. Uh, do I wish that the Trumpster was more anti-nuke? Yes, of course I do. Uh, and I've said that many times. Foxtrot Alpha, in 1962, a lost U-2 spy plane nearly triggered World War III. Now, this is just... I'm going to get back to the Fukushima and all things nuclear in a minute, but this stood out to me, and I think it'll make sense to you, too. Uh, Dr. Helen Caldercott and many others have spoken about how many times we have almost gone to war and used these ridiculous weapons that we have made. And again, people say, well, nuclear weapons end in World War II. Japan was already ready to give up. They just wanted to keep their emperor, and we bombed them because we said we weren't going to allow them to do so. But after we dropped two nuclear bombs on them, what did we do? We allowed them to do so anyhow. Free history lesson here. Why did we do it? Because we wanted to intimidate Russia. And um, let's remember also, you can search this quite easily. Japan had said in their headline of the newspaper, that they were going to attack America at Pearl Harbor. Now, America said they had they thought it was just a hollow threat. So they weren't even looking? Or did certain people within the government allow Pearl Harbor to happen in order to usher in support for World War II? Considering that Germany was on the ropes and Japan wasn't doing much better, there can be an argument made for that. But in any event, ever since that time, it has been a hair trigger with nuclear weaponry and whatnot. And I wanted to point to some of the errors that can happen here, even above and beyond the dangers which we see, not just in the nuclear power industry, of course, but with uh, nuclear weapons. In October of 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis threatened to escalate into global thermal nuclear war. The United States and Soviet Union both mobilized over nuclear missiles in Cuba, and a single spark could have effectively ended civilization. But what's not well remembered today is that at the height of that dispute, a lost plane near the North Pole nearly ended the world down, the, nearly led the world down the same path. On October 4th of 1962, a U.S. spy plane on a reconnaissance flight over Cuba made a disturbing find. Soviet SS-4 short-range ballistic missiles and an SS-5 intermediate-range ballistic missiles. And... Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev had jumped at Cuban leader Fidel Castro's offer to host missiles in his country just a few hundred miles from America and within easy launch range. A furious Washington, it says, ordered the U.S. Navy to blockade the island country, technically an act of war, and prepared both an invasion force and its nuclear forces, just in case U.S. forces worldwide were at DEFCON 2, just one step away from eminent nuclear war. So what you've got here now is a tit-for-tat that's quickly getting out of control and maybe people forgetting that coincidences, people say coincidences don't happen. Of course they do. It could be a coincidence that the plane you need vanishes and Russia has nothing to do with it while you're almost at war with Russia, for instance. On October 27th, a U.S. intelligence, as U.S. intelligence attempted to assess the construction of missile facilities, a U-2 pilot by Air Force Major Rudolf Anderson was shot down over Cuba. The shootdown prompted Assistant Secretary of Defense to state the Soviets have fired the first shot. What decision makers at the time did not know was that there was a very, very good chance of a second shot, one that might have triggered all-out war. It goes on here, as the U.S. intelligence community put Cuba under a microscope, other reconnaissance operations against the Soviet Union continued as normal. Also, on October 27th, the U-2 piloted by Captain Charles Maltzby took off from Eisen Air Force Base in Alaska. 
Molesby was headed, it says, to the North Pole region where he would collect air samples that could inform about Soviet nuclear tests in the Arctic Circle. GPS had not been invented yet, and Maltzbury was too far north to rely on ground navigation systems, so the pilot navigated reading the stars. Unfortunately, in part due to the northern lights, Maltzbury got lost and started heading in the wrong direction, into Soviet airspace. Again, no such thing as coincidences? I don't know, maybe not so quick. The Soviet Air Defense Commander PVO Strani and detected the U-2 and scrambled MIG-19 fighters to intercept. Again, on the Soviet side, not understanding something as simple as the northern lights affecting where travel is due to the beating of war drums assumed that America had jumped the gun. Wouldn't be nearly as frightening if there wasn't hair triggers on weapons that should never have been designed. Because, in part because it doesn't allow for this sort of thing very well. At the same time, the U.S. Air Force scrambled a pair of F-2 Delta Dagger fighters to protect the U-2 and bring Maltzby home. The fighters typically carried Falcon air-to-air -air missiles, and their wartime mission was to shoot down incoming nuclear-armed Soviet bombers. One very concerning detail. Once the Pentagon shifted alert status to DEFCON 3, the Delta Daggers conveniently armed, conventional, excuse me, armed missiles had been swapped out with nuclear ones. Once equipped with miss, the missiles, the, once equipped with the missiles, pardon me, the pilots could launch them and their nuclear warheads at will. That hit that again, that happens at DEFCON 3, which was triggered by the altercation triggered by Northern Lights. The AIM 26A Falcon was named, was armed with the WF 4 nuclear warhead. The WF 4 also armed the Army's Navy Crockett Battlefield nuclear weapon. It's shown here in this article here at uh, Fox, uh, Foxtrot Alpha. The W54 had an explosive yield equivalent of 0.25 kilotons or 250 tons of TNT. Hiroshima, by comparison, was only a yield of 16 tons. What happened next? Obviously, you and I are here, so it was resolved peacefully. It is, however, very easy to imagine an alternative outcome were we not. It said uh, the F-02 pilots were ordered to defend the U-2 from Soviet fighters, but had only nuclear weapons to carry out their mission. Had they indeed launched it at the Soviet counterparts, Moscow would have almost certainly uh, have intercepted it as the first moves of an all-out nuclear war. Their worst fears would have been confirmed, of course, and the Soviet leadership could have ordered the first strike to destroy as many American nukes on the ground as possible. It says, alternately, if Captain Moltzby had been shot down or crashed or presumed shot down, the U.S. government could have considered that a second shot in an attempt to blind the U.S. So, it goes more in depth in the article. Definitely go and check it out. But I think that that's important for us to remember exactly what we're talking about when we mention why we do not want certain countries to have nuclear weapons. God, I missed the behind-the-scenes queen. All right. Uh, Saudi Energy Minister confirms plan to enrich uranium zero hedge. Remember I told you just a few minutes ago that I wasn't that keen on some of what Trump has done as it pertains to weapons and support for Saudi Arabia. This is one of the many reasons which I, why I say that. Among the most underreported but explosive stories of the past six months has been growing signs of Saudi Arabia's nuclear ambitions. But now there are new questions over whether the kingdom's future planned two nuclear power reactors will be limited to purely energy-related and peaceful purposes. Now, pause. We've already talked about dirty bombs. For anybody that's lived under a rock and doesn't know, you can take something as simple as the water, depending on whether or not you care if the person handling it lives. Um, if you don't, it's very easy to make a dirty bomb out of a great number of things that are produced at nuclear power plants. 
glorified grenade, launch it in a city, and now you've got a really big problem on your hands. You've got cancers to worry about in the future. You've got uh, panic. You've got skin burns. You've got, it depends on exactly what it is it's done, how it's done, where it's done, what the air is, how it interacts with water, what the temperature is, etc., etc. So I can't pretend to give every possible scenario here, but it's, it's bad. Let's not forget that uh, I'm sure they'll have some safeguards, but any kind of a breakdown in those countries, which are barely held together now by a handful of uh, religious fanatics, these are sitting ducks for terrorist attacks. These are sitting ducks for even routine releases. Like Helen Caldercott has said, Dr. Caldercott, a routine release is like a routine cancer. These things are deadly even when they're running well. And there's reasons to question Saudi Arabia's loyalty to us, even if the current leadership is friendly. We know from experience that other leaders get in office later and then they decide to hate the gringo and we're all doomed. So why are we helping Saudi Arabia with nuclear power? First of all, it gives them nuclear knowledge. They're never going to unlearn it. Second of all, it gives them 40 or 50 years with just one plant before they shut it down to get leadership that hates us. And of course, even once it's shut down, the waste and the spent fuel rods are poisonous for millions of years. Yes, millions. Look up the half-life of plutonium or uranium. So with all of these concerns, we have this going on. On Monday, the kingdom's nuclear energy minister said Saudi Arabia wants to enrich uranium for its nuclear power program, according to Reuters. And that's an announcement likely to hinder talks with Washington over American companies' potential help in establishing its nuclear energy program. Again, big fan of the Trumpster, as I'm sure you see behind me, but he's wrong on this, friends. I'm sorry, he's just wrong. The world's top oil exporter says it wants to use nuclear power to diversify its energy mix. Yeah, make money. But enrichment also opens up the possibility of military uses of uranium, Reuters noted. No, you think so? We are producing it cautiously. We are proceeding with it cautiously. We are experimenting with two nuclear reactors, Energy Minister Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman said in reference to a proposed plan to issue a tender for the country's first nuclear reactors primarily talks of which are underway for a multi-billion dollar project. Now, am I happy that uh, Israel has a nuclear reactor? No, I'm not happy when anybody has a cancer producer. However, history has shown us that Israel is not itchy on the nuclear trigger, or we would have already seen a problem here. We don't have any reasons to assume that this would be a uh, certainty with Saudi Arabia. Again, even if it may be for the short term. The world's top oil exporter says it wants to use nuclear power to diversify the energy. I bet they do. Makes me sick. Reactors, even for peaceful energy purposes, require that uranium be enriched to around 5% purity. But once the technology is in place, it becomes easy to go beyond that. Of course, because like I said earlier, the science isn't going to be unlearned. It's just a process that repeats itself. Cost a lot to do it, but you know how to do it once you know the process. Reuters has reported that progress on the discussions has been difficult because Saudi Arabia does not want to sign a deal that would rule out the possibility of enriching uranium or reprocessing spent fuel. Both are paths to the bomb. So, again, you can find that also on Prison Planet. Think about this. A letter sent from bipartisan group of senators to the Trump administration said many in Congress therefore worry that Saudi Arabia's interest in someday producing its own stocks of nuclear fuel, despite the fact that the kingdom could purchase fuel on an international market more cheaply, could lead it to divert fuel to convert to nuclear weapons. In other words, it can get the fuel it needs. What is it that they want by doing it themselves? Firecrackers, right? New uranium firecrackers. Think about it, people. Think about it. 
Paul Joseph Watson, this is Prison Planet. They're not even aggregating this one. New national security advisor once said the U.S. could take losing 20 million people in a nuclear war. Now, we've only got four stories here, but I have left. I had to mention this. John Bolton's interim replacement as national security advisor, Charles Copperman, once said that the United States could take losing 20 million people in a nuclear war. It's, again, it's, I'm well aware. I can recite the movie Dr. Strange Love. It's one of my favorites. Yes, I'm aware. Uh, that's what's funny here. Uh, gallows humor kind of funny. I'm not saying we wouldn't get our hair must, but I am saying more than, more than 20 million killed. Depending on the breaks. During an interview with journalist Robert Shear in 82, Copperman said the U.S. could win a nuclear war at the expense of a mere 20 million deaths. He said if the objective in a war is to destroy as many Soviet civilians and as many American civilians as is feasible, and uh, casualty levels reached 150 million on each side, then it's going to be rough to say that you have a surviving nation after that, he said. But, depending on how the nuclear war is fought, it could mean the difference between 150 casualties and 200 million casualties. He meant 150 million. I think that is a significant difference. And if the country loses 20 million people, you may have a chance of surviving after that. I think it's possible to win if it is clear after the war that one side is stronger than the other side, then the weaker side is going to accede to the demands of the stronger side. Again, remember Buck Turgeon said the war room scene. Can we, I don't even know if this computer is going to play it. But, uh, oh, where is it? Here it comes. Catch him with their pants down. Uh, do watch Doctor Strange Love, and it will be frightening to you just how how anybody watching this that's seen the movie before knows exactly why I played that. We're living in times that even Stanley Kubrick thought was nothing more than a dark comedy. All right, friends, the sun. Doomsday bomb. China unveils terrifying Dongfeng 41 nuke that can strike the U.S. in 30 minutes with 10 warheads on the 7th an 70th anniversary parade. It says it's the ultimate doomsday weapon, a terrifying super nuke took center stage at the huge arms showcase held in Tiananmen Square. Now, when Donald Trump wanted to show off our weapons, people thought that he was insane. But there is a reason here. Um, other countries are rapidly looking for ways to allow the U.S. to know that they can't, they all but can't wait to start a nuclear war with us. Uh, they claim to want peace, but constantly aim for war. And the trouble is, uh, they have purchased so much of U.S. manufacturing that when the NBA thing hit a couple of days ago and that the owner of GM, whatever he was, bravely stood up. I'm a huge basketball fan, can you tell? My wife was. Um, if you... I don't even want to word this. You have one man in the NBA, a powerful figure. A G, he's a GM. Standing up for the rights of the Taiwanese. But all of the people who have their money, big Hollywood, uh, big sports, all of those people have their fangs in California, in China. And you've got the California liberal crowd who is already embracing communism. Bowing to a regime that has the most arguably powerful, fastest nuclear weapons pointed at our doorstep. This is what modern liberalism is doing. You have a great number of liberals who are out there whining that men and women want to have their own bathroom, but don't say a word about the way China treats people. And you can make the argument that many of the Islamists that China is persecuting in their country are 
a threat of some, probably perhaps tied to terrorism. But China is using that fact to mow over complete villages without even any evidence that the people within have committed any crime other than the fact that they might not be communist enough. They have a social credit score there that can prevent you from doing something as simple as catching a bus. All of this from a nation that's parading and bragging about how they want to be the strongest nuclear nation and how they have nothing to fear from America. And it was a number of years ago that China produced a graphic with a nuclear bomb going off over America, in which case they said that that was an error. They hadn't caught that in the graphic. They were just trying to use the America country as a graphic. They hadn't caught that it was, you know, in clip art or whatever. Do you buy that crap? Because I don't. If we'd done it to them, then I had a fit. So this is why, again, I, I'm very interested in seeing China sort of brought to heel and seeing them have to pay the same kind of rates in trade that we do. Because we are empowering a nation and signing our own death warrant with some of the most vile people in the world. China, Iran, so at least Obama tried. Um, uh, Saudi Arabia, China, Iran, what are we doing? All right, guys, uh, two left. The Kansas City Star. Five earthquakes in less than an hour rattle southeast Missouri, experts say. I'm not going to stay on this long, but ever since last March of 2019, maybe earlier than that, I know uh, myself and, of course, Michael Snyder, end of the American dream, has been on this since day one. Earthquakes can trigger meltdowns and other nuclear mishaps at power plants. We know this, and I say this every show, we know this because it was the earthquake and not the tsunami that began one of the multiple meltdowns which took place in Fukushima. So an area, it says here, of southwest Missouri experienced five earthquakes in less than an hour Monday morning, experts say. It started with a 2.6 trembler around 11, 18 a.m. near Lurborn. So these aren't huge quakes. That's not my point. My point is that the, the Earth is more active than ever before. And it's the worst time in the world to not only figure out the quickest and safest way to shut nuclear power plants down and what to do with the horrendous fuel that's left behind, but it is also imperative that we do not build new nuclear power plants. And this cannot be stressed enough. And again, I've said it a hundred times. If you are in a mutual fund, make sure that mutual fund does not in any way, shape, matter, or form help nuclear power plants, help TEPCO, help GE, help Westinghouse. How do you avoid that? Uh, get in an infrastructure mutual fund, and it avoids much, of, much or all of that. All right, guys, uh, Japan is lying about Fukushima disaster as it promotes the 2020 Olympic Games. This is nuclearnews.net, nuclear hyphen news. Japan is lying about the Fukushima disaster as it promotes the 2020 Olympic Games. This is the dum D of the day. The dunce cap of the month will be uh, next week or the week after. The Japanese government is lying and should be held accountable for hoodwinking the world about the ravages of Fukushima, especially with the Olympics scheduled for the next year. For next year. The ashes of half a dozen unidentified laborers ended up at a Buddhist temple in the town of North, just crippled Fuku of the crippled Fukushima plant. Some of the dead men had no papers. Others left no emergency contacts. Their names could not be confirmed, and no family members have been tracked down to claim the remains. They were simply labeled decontamination troops. Now, we've heard before that we no real hard evidence on this, I don't want to say that, but there is some evidence which suggests that many of the homeless people that nobody will miss are being worked to death, perhaps uh, in areas which people should not be in, and then left for dead. Now, they're not necessarily being juiced. I think that would show up on an autopsy. If it was enough radioactive poison to kill them, then whoever did the autopsy or came into contact with the body would also be poisoned. And I think at some point that would be picked up. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't have any reason to believe that that's the case. But they may well have been worked to death. 
Um, September 16th, 2019, Tokyo Electric Power's Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station has experienced three massive meltdowns in 11, we know that. Addressing the issue, Japan's Environmental Minister, Yashiki Harada, who's worried about where they're going to store the radioactive water, which they describe now as phosphorescent water here on the website, he gave the following advice. The only option will be to drain it into the sea and dilute it. The only option, they write? Really? Over the past eight years, Tokyo Electric Power has scrambled like the Mad Hatter to construct emergency storage tanks, about a thousand of them, to contain upwards of a million tons of contaminated radioactive water. You know, the kind of stuff that over time destroys human cells, alters DNA, causes cancer, and produces something like the horrific disfigured creature in John Carpenter's The Thing. Well said. That's the upshot of a triple nuclear meltdown that necessitates constant flow of water to prevent further melting of reactor cores that have been decimated and transfigured into corium or melted blobs. It's the closest thing to a full-blown China syndrome in all of the human history. Whew. Although the truth is a little dicey situation for decades to come. And in this article, we find, and this is a rather in-depth article, it says, um, over time the truth comes out, and when it does, it's dreadfully atrocious. A BBC, BBC special report, The True Toll of Chernobyl, the official internationally recognized death toll of just 31 died as an immediate result of Chernobyl, where the UN estimates that only 50 deaths can be directly attributed to the disaster. That's the official tally. Ugh. If so far off the mark that if it was a baseball pitch, it would be in the dirt and a prime example of the public not getting the truth about the ravages of nuclear power accidents. According to the BBC article, the Russian Academy of Sciences said that 112,000 to 125,000 had died by 2005. And uh, they died as a result of radiation exposure. That's 2,500 times more than the death toll official reports, which also never increased the number over time as radiation takes its merry old time blasting, destroying, and altering human cell structure. Um, the official report leaves out all cases of radi radiation exposure that kills and cripples in subsequent, subsequent days, months, and years. So you see, if you don't die right away, then they don't include it. They just say, oh, you'd have got cancer anyway. No, you would not have just gotten cancer anyway. That's why cancer rates were up so high. Ukrainian authorities claim the death rates of Chernobyl cleanup worker, workers rose from 3.5 to 7.5 deaths per 1,000 in 1988. And in 2012, the database had 651,453 cleanup workers, which equates to 11,392 deaths. And this is what they're trying to put into the water. This is what they want to release into the water. And they want to have the, they're trying to say that Tokyo is safe for the games which are coming up. Even though the science, much of it displayed in this article, is simply not, not true. Victor Shushko, Deputy Director of the National Research Center for Radiation Medicine, based in Kiev and the Ukraine, describes the Chernobyl disaster as the largest anthropogenic disaster in the history of mankind, although it could be argued that Fukushima has now bested it. Postscript, it's a real shame that the authorities hide the truth from the world, from the UN. We need to admit that actually many people are dying. We are not allowed to say that, but TEPCO employees are dying, but they keep mum about it. And this was from uh, Kashibuta Adaragua, former mayor of Futaba, which is a Fukushima prefecture. So friends, I think it's important that you pay attention to it. I think you should share this show. I think you should hit subscribe. Let other people know exactly what it is that's going on and let them know how it's going to affect anybody who may have someone they know that's going to the Olympic Games or in the Olympic Games. If you are going to go, be mindful of what you eat. For the love of God, don't eat uh, sushi or something. Perhaps bring your own food.
things like that. And beyond that, let us remember why it is more important than ever to protect ourselves from the lies that the nuclear industry so often gives. Because it is life in that. You know, and there's a lot of people who have people at home who love them and who care about them. And you don't want to see your loved ones with cancer or something horrible. Because if you are lucky enough to have someone who cares about you, the last thing you want is to see their life cut short due to a lie doled out by the nuclear industry. Good night, friends. God bless. Please donate if you can. You can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. You can do that through PayPal. I really would appreciate it. Uh, as far as the show is concerned, things have been very tight lately. Um, of course, the, the algorithm bans do everything that they possibly can to prevent uh, me from being heard with the facts and the truth and insights that I give. So that's up to you to help me keep doing this. Um, just mailing out dunce caps can be anywhere from 15 to 40 bucks. So do me a favor. Please donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Thanks, friends. Good night.